Welcome to this video where we're going to go over how I make procedural clouds in Blender using geometry nodes. We're basically going to make a modifier that we're going to be able to add to any mesh object and this is going to convert it into a cloud procedurally. You'll see how I use this. I basically start with complex meshes like Suzanne or even just spheres and then I build out the cloud shape using this modifier on all those objects and duplicate them up a bunch and then I'll put that cloud in a collection and then I can instance that around my scene. You could then say take these clouds, render them onto cards, put them in your background scenes, you could render out a HDR with these, anything you like. So yeah, let's start the process. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just delete out everything and then add in any mesh we like. I'm going to add in uh, Suzanne just as a base to turn into a cloud. And then I'm going to go into geometry nodes, add in a new node group. And what I essentially want to do is convert this into a volume and then randomize that volume. So in order to do this, the first step I'm going to do is distribute a bunch of points um, to fill the volume of this mesh. And then I'm going to displace those points and add a bunch of randomness to them. So in order to distribute points in volume, I'm going to add in that node. But I can't just plug it in right here. You see we get an error that we need to first convert this into an actual volume from a mesh. So I'm going to use the mesh to volume node to do that. And now you see we get a couple of points. If I preview the actual mesh to volume output, you can see what that's doing is converting it into this sort of cloud. But this has no randomness or no detail, so that's why we're going to go ahead and add the point step to add a bunch of randomness to this. So the quality of this is currently based on this voxel amount, which isn't ideal because if we make another mesh that is significantly larger, um, you can see that there's a distinct difference in detail between the two. So instead I'm going to set this to size and this should make the resolution more consistent based on any size we have. So I'll set that to 0.1, that seems like a fairly good size for that. This doesn't have to be the highest res thing in the world um, just because we're using it for our points at the minute. Uh, random is fine for this and I'm going to set the density really high to something like a thousand. I basically want to completely fill this uh, mesh with points. I might even go a little bit higher um, considering I'm not fully seeing the ears coming through here but uh, you can always tweak this later. It's good to add as a quality kind of input too but now in order to randomize these points I'm going to use a set position node and I'm going to plug in a noise texture just to demonstrate that if I untick normalize you can see we just basically blow this whole thing up um, and I'm going to use a vector math node set to scale and turn this way down and you can see that controls the randomness a little bit better. You can also play with the scale on the noise texture to get some more interesting results and if you turn up distortion as well that tends to help a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and add another set position node and I'm actually going to use a Voronoi texture for this one. And the reason I'm going to use a Voronoi is if I quickly show you um, what I'm intending to do with just on a sphere with some regular displacement. If I just quickly add a displace modifier to the sphere and use a Voronoi texture on it, you can see that I give this some subdivisions but we get this kind of look and if I invert this so it has a negative scale you can see we get this kind of blobby effect which is uh, what I want to try and achieve on these points so in order to do that in geometry nodes I'm going to have to scale these points outwards now with uh, Voronoi textures you can't plug the color output directly into the offset it will not do um, the same thing that a noise texture does basically in terms of uh, this color output is quite different to the distance output and you can see it's just sort of breaking everything up into these little kind of blob shapes which you know isn't the worst thing in the world but it's not what I'm looking for. So instead what I want to do is scale the position of these points by the distance output of the Voronoi texture. So I'll bring in the position input, this is just the position of the points and then I'm going to use a scale node and scale them by the distance of the Voronoi. Plug that into the offset and we get an interesting result. Now in order to control the strength of it I'm going to use a math node. 
set to multiply after the distance output. And now, like I did on the sphere, I want to invert this. So I'm going to set it to minus one. And then I'm going to add another multiply and this I'll set to one. And now I can hide this first multiply to invert it. And this just becomes our strength of the Voronoi. And I'll turn the scale way down. But hopefully what you should start to see is that kind of blobby effect start to come into play as I play with both the scale on the noise texture and this multiply value. And you'll see it more clearly the more points you have. And I'll also go ahead and duplicate this Suzanne and make a bigger mesh because um, it will look a little bit different on a larger mesh. Just make sure your scale is always set to 1. Something like that I think will work quite nice. You can always come back and change this once we convert this to a cloud. That's our first layer of randomness complete. And now what I'm going to do is use a points to volume node. And all that's going to do is basically instance sort of volume spheres on these points. That's how I like to think about it. And this radius controls the radius of those spheres that we instance. So if I decrease that to, I like to leave it at 0.2. And then in order to preview this, um, properly I'm going to set up some render settings really quickly. So I'm going to go into my render tab, set this to cycles on the GPU and then I am going to go ahead and go into rendered mode and then I want to set up a sky texture for this so I'll quickly change this geometry nodes to a shader editor set to world and then find my nodes and plug in a sky texture into the color and I will rotate the sun around a little bit and turn up the ozone to make it more blue. That's a nice quick way to set up some lighting there. And I'll increase the sun size to something like 11 degrees to soften the shadows. And now that looks pretty nice. Um, but we still don't have any shaders on this either. So I'm actually going to use a set material node and make a shader for this. I'll call it cloud. And right now this doesn't work because we're trying to shade a volume with a surface shader. So I'm going to remove the uh, principled BSDF and I'm going to plug into the volume input a principled volume node. And now I'll increase the value of the color to be bright white. And maybe I can bump up the density a little bit more too. And now you see what we have is this sort of random looking cloud material. And this isn't bad, but you'll see there's a problem in that the... Uh, uh, blockiness of the cloud due to the voxel size so I again you could turn this up but to make it more procedural for any size cloud I'm going to set this to size and I'll set it back to 0.1 I think the higher you make this uh, this node will become much slower and you can see this if you turn on timings in the overlays and um, you can see the difference between 0.1 and 0.005 it you know it more than doubles and you do get more resolution in these little sphere shapes but Sometimes that can be undesirable. So I'll leave it at 0.1. And now you could leave it like this. This is a decent enough cloud material, but I like to, um, I'm just gonna tweak the Voronoi scale a little bit there. I like to add another layer of detail on top of this by distorting these distinct sphere shapes that we get. So in order to do that, because we can never change the actual um, shape that's instant onto the points, I'm going to convert this to a mesh. And now you see this gives you kind of a very interesting look. Um, and this might be desirable depending on the sort of style you're going for. It does render a lot faster too. But personally I'm going to just use this to distort. So I'm going to use a set position node again. And I'll go back into solid view for a second so you can see what's going on. Um, and in the volume to mesh node I'm going to change this from grid to size again. Set this to 0.1 so we're not losing any detail. And I'm going to use a Musgrave texture. Actually, Musgrave's been depreciated. It's now all in the noise texture to distort this. So I'll plug the color into the offset, turn off normalize, and then add a vector math scale node again. The usual displacement setup. Set this to a lower value. Play with the scale a little bit. Turn up the detail and the roughness, maybe. Just play with these settings a little bit. 
if I go back into rendered view, you can see actually it's um, erroring out a little bit because we're currently rendering this as a mesh. So I'll convert this back to a volume again. So I need a mesh to volume node. And I'll set this from amount to size, set to 0.1 again. And you can see that really helps break up the shape a lot. And I think this gives a much better result than not doing this step, even though it is quite slow. But yeah, that pretty much concludes the whole Geonode setup for uh, procedural cloud generation. Now, the next sort of step that I like to do is making the cloud shapes. So what I like to do is you, s you normally start with a Suzanne or some sort of complex mesh, and then maybe add a sphere, add the same geometry nodes, a group to that to make it cloud, and then I'll uh, scale up in edit mode and sort of just start kit bashing these different elements together to make interesting shapes. And then once I have a shape that I like, I tend to grab all the objects that makes it up and put it in its own collection. And I'll call it something like cloud, uh, cloud A probably, because then I could go ahead and make a bunch of these. And then when I use these in an actual scene, I'll just collection instance, cloud A, and that will make everything a whole bunch faster. I can duplicate this up a bunch of times. And there you go. Um, some nice other render settings for volumes as well, by the way, is under light paths to increase your bounces from zero to one. And that will really help soften up the look of everything. Basically let some light penetrate through the cloud. Uh, also, if you're finding it quite slow to render, I under volumes here, I usually turn max steps down to something like 32. I haven't really noticed any quality difference in doing this. If you go too low, it does get a little bit funky, but um, I found 32 works quite nice. And if you can handle it, I would turn up volume to two as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for clouds. You can go ahead and make a bunch of custom shapes now and use these in a bunch of scenes. Thanks for watching.